Welcome to Nursing Edge Unscripted Saga, where we use stories to connect the past to the present and then our future as we reimagine our teaching and learning. As we celebrate the NLN Year of the Nurse Educator, we pay tribute to extraordinary nurses who've made significant contributions to nursing education. We dive into the stories of nurse educators who recognized a need, challenged traditional customs, and influenced transformative change. Welcome to part two of our discussion about Dr. David Allen, an early supporter of the curriculum revolution and active participant in the call for transformation in the design of nursing programs, in the decisions regarding content selection and in the ways in which the student teacher relationship flourishes in a dynamic educational environment. In part one, we discussed Dr. Allen's background as a scholar of critical social theory and feminist pedagogy, a lens that prompted him to identify potentially harmful educational practices in nursing education. In part two, we will explore two revolutionary themes identified by Dr. Allen. He defined these themes as practices in schools of nursing that call for a revision and a new future for nursing education. In his words, quote, the curriculum revolution for me represents an opportunity to step back and critically reflect on the entire educational paradigm underlying the history of nursing education and its current forms. It's a time for revisioning. End quote. He described revisioning as an opportunity to look backward and to see with fresh eyes how we have made choices and to initiate dialogue with nurse educator colleagues and with students to sharpen collective reflections and awaken self understanding. The first revolutionary theme is the tyranny of content. Dr. Allen spoke about the consequence of understanding expertise as knowing detailed and complex clinical information, rather than a balance of knowing specific clinical content and sound pedagogical practices. He reasoned that when our primary commitment is to content dissemination and to how we know or do not know that students have acquired content, we risk communicating to students that a nurse needs to be an expert in every aspect of care. He understood that the responsibility to ensure students have acquired the right content to make them safe and employable, a perspective that so often permeates faculty conversations, is often an overwhelming burden for faculty. Dr. Allen reasoned that the curriculum revolution invites a revisioning of our interpretation of and responses to these obligations. He suggested that we embrace practices from the humanities and align with students to help them orient themselves to the field and facilitate their acquisition of critical skills to understand and apply the content. He proposed that, quote, the relatively short history of nursing and the fragility of the information has seduced us into thinking we could expose students to all important essential information, end quote. He invited nurse educators to move away from a strict allegiance to content expertise, recognizing the pull of the faculty burden to graduate safe practitioners. But with his curriculum revolution colleagues, he implored nurse educators to consider that application and synthesis of clinical information with students in dynamic conversation will empower active students to acquire and analyze information on their own. And this outcome better prepares them for practice. The second revolutionary theme is dialogue and power. 
Dr. Allen identified that feminist and critical theory acknowledge that dialogues are not always, perhaps rarely, democratic conversations. He speculated that dialogue between teacher and student have not been democratic. He understood that critical and feminist theory view purport that the rationality of a decision depends vitally on both the quality of the information considered and the perspectives brought to bear on that information. He concluded that our current educational dialogue and our proposed more engaged models for future educational practices must include a revisioning of the authoritarian atmosphere of our schools. In his words, quote, conformity and obedience are still highly prized behaviors, even if there is verbal genuflection toward creativity and diversity, end quote. We close this edition of Saga with Dr. Allen's dreams of visions still fully unrealized for nursing education and for nurse educators. Quote, first, I'd like to see a radical democratization of our nursing schools. Second, I'd like to hear a radical skepticism about all fixed solutions about what students need and how to manufacture educational products. Third, I'd like to see a swing of the pendulum away from an extreme commitment to content and back to a caring commitment to students and each other, end quote. Dr. Allen's visions, echoed by his Curriculum Revolution colleagues, Drs. Beavis, Diekelman, Ironside, Tanner, and Chin, were radical departures from the norms in nursing education in the 1990s. Since that time, Dr. Benner's work to transform nursing education famously celebrated in the Carnegie Report in 2010, followed by the calls for reform in the Future of Nursing reports in 2011 and 2021, have brought substance and perspective to their ideas. We have a rich history of calls for radical revisioning. The future is ours to heed the calls, to shape and transform. And so the saga continues. And may our saga continue as we bring to a close this episode of Nursing Edge Unscripted, Saga. Thank you for joining us. And remember, good teaching doesn't just happen. Find your fit, push the boundaries, and celebrate the ahas. <laughs>